Hey everybody, welcome back to this channel about magic. For those of you who don't know, season seven of Penn and Teller's Fool Us has just begun. The first episode aired yesterday and I'm reacting in this video to Sean Farquhar. He's a Canadian magician, a two-time world champion of magic, and a member of the exclusive <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is I just made a reaction video to him on Saturday, a couple days ago, and already he's back on Fool Us again. I mean, come on. Granted, there were nine years between season one and season seven, so maybe that's my fault. But anyway, who's counting, right? In this first episode, they've decided to only show magicians who have already fooled Penn and Teller twice before. In fact, this episode is called Third Time's a Charm. As Sean is the first magician appearing on this episode, if he fools them, he will be the first magician to have a three times victory fooling over Penn and Teller. At any rate, I'm excited, I'm rooting for him. I do not know what to expect, so let's just go ahead and jump into the reaction. Hi, my name is Sean Farquhar, and I'm the first person ever to fool Penn and Teller twice. My pages are blank. The entire book is blank. After my first appearance, I got to appear all over the world. I was doing 285 days a year on cruise ships and theaters and hotels, but I began to lose touch with my wife and my daughter and my mom. I decided to build my own theater, a little place called Hidden Wonders. My family is adoring it. My daughter, she helps me at the theater. My wife is the person who takes the tickets at the door. It's an amazing experience, and my job is to share wonder and joy with people. And yet, for some reason, I just can't seem to make Penn happy. You rat bastard. <laughs> Here I come for the third one. He told me I wouldn't be here unless it was over his dead body. He's looking great, <laughs> but I'm coming back anyways. I love this guy, he's so positive. And that's cool, I didn't know he made his own theater and so he gets to work there with his daughter and his wife. What a great idea. Anyway, I'm excited, let's proceed. Nice bookcase. Hello, gentlemen. It's an absolute pleasure to be back on your stage. The first time I came, I did a card trick. And the second time I visited, I did a book trick. I thought if I was ever invited back again, I'd do a card trick with books or maybe a book trick with cards. I've decided I'm gonna do both, together, simultaneously, and at the same time. To make that possible, Allison, would you mind helping me? Sure. I have a deck of cards. These are bicycle playing cards, hermetically sealed for your protection. Inside, there's a little paper seal. It says United States Playing Card Company. Yeah. Not Canadian. I'll pop it open inside a brand new deck of cards, never touched by human hands. Now, as you know, with a brand new deck of cards, there's a couple of jokers. Uh, we don't need both of them. The other end has advertising cards. We don't need either of them. The rest of the deck is in what is referred to as new deck order. They run joker, ace, two, three, in sequential order till you get the king. Then they repeat again till they get to the middle. Those are the kissing kings. I call them the broke back kings. Oh. They continue, this is a brand new deck in new deck order. This is the fun part. We're gonna give them a little mix just so they're totally shuffled. Give them a couple, but I won't do seven because I learned from Penn, if I do seven, they'll go back into new deck order. Would you take the cards from me and just begin dealing cards onto my hand? Like, yeah, yeah, sure. You don't have to do them one at a time. You can do groups if you want to. Or you can do them from the bottom if you like. Or you can cut the cards and you can just do whatever you want, but stop at some point where you have cards and I have cards. Oh, all right. That's good. Yeah. Most magicians would spread the cards like that and ask you to take a card. Right. That's a classic. I'm not going to do that. Okay. You're just going to pick the top card to look at it and remember it. This is the of card. Yours or yeah, mine? look right here and remember this card. Yes. You got it? Yes. Place it back into your. Okay. I mean, it seems fair so far. The only thing is, it seemed like at the beginning he might have done two perfect pharaoh shuffles, but he did them pretty quickly. I'm not sure if they would have been perfect. And yeah, actually, as he mentioned, that is a really cool thing. I think it's eight times if you do a perfect out pharaoh shuffle eight times in a row the deck comes completely back to the original order, which is pretty impressive. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's fun. This is the kind of thing magicians do to pass the time when they're sitting at home alone. But uh, yeah, so far it seems pretty random, and you know, Allison got to even mix the cards and give him some, so... But let's proceed. Deck. We need a random card, or a number, so I'm gonna use the next cards to make that. There's an eight and a five. That's 85. That'll be our random number. Sound easy? Why do we need a random number? I don't know. Because it's just, just, not just a card trick, it's also a book trick. Oh. And I have a book. It's The Invisible Man. I've memorized this. Every page, every paragraph, every sentence, and every word. I bought it because I like the cover. Yes, I judged a book by its cover. <laughs> it's The Invisible Man. It's got a picture of him. Well, you can't see him, he's invisible. Right. But he's wearing a hat, and I like this hat. Because I thought I came on this show for a third time, I'd want to do a hat trick. Oh. Ah. 
for those of you who don't know, a hat trick is like getting three points, like in a sports game. So if he wins three times, it would be like a hat trick. By the way, uh, I'm kind of confused and I'm having a hard time laughing at his jokes because I'm so focused on what he's doing with his hands. I saw his hand dip into his pocket to get the card box and I was like, uh oh, did he do something there? Is he adding cards? And then he took the book out and put it in front of everything else also. He could have added something there as well, I don't know. There's a lot going on and it's hard to know which is a red herring and which is actually something happening. Let's keep going. Okay. What was the number? 80... 85. 85. There's page 85. Allison, I want you to look at page 85. Uh, oh, I can see what's going on. Let's do like the first time. We're going to stand back to back. We'll stand shoulder to shoulder. I don't know cheek if I cheek, trust so this. to speak. <laughs> look on that page. Yes. Page 85. Look for the largest word, the word with the most letters in it. I think there's 12 letters. You'll find it on the third from the bottom line. It begins with C, ends with N, and the word is conversation. Did I get that right? Yes. Did I really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Enough with the book trick. Let's go back to the card trick. A second ago, we had some cards. I put them back into the box. If I took out this out and it was your card, would that be impressive? Very. What was your card? Uh, the No, never mind. Okay. This is a joker. Jokers are wild. I win. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's take this a step further. Write your name on the face of the box, right across here. Right here? Yeah, nice and big. So I'll have a souvenir. Very nice. Allison writes her name on the face of the box. Would you mind capping up the pen so it's all locked up nice and tight? I'll take it back. And if you put your hand out, put your other hand on top and trap them in between. The first time I came on the show, I asked Penn to be in this exact position. And the cards went back in the new deck order. Then the box closed. The paper seal went on uh, and they no. wrapped it in cellophane. Would you Not like again. to see that? Yeah. I've already done it. Take a look. No. Really? <laughs> look, it's sealed. <laughs> cellophane wrapped. Yeah. Wait, let's get back to the book trick. A moment ago, I said conversation <laughs> appeared on page 85. It also appears on page 11. It appears on page 34. On 11, it's the second paragraph, second word. On page uh, 34, it's the fourth line from the bottom. And on page 84, you might want to go to the 84 one. Uh, on page 84, it appears, uh, oh, wait a second. What's that? Oh, look, there's a playing card. What was your card? This one. Was it really? Jack of yeah. diamonds. And look, the page is missing. Yeah. That's weird. Hold on, let's go back to the card oh, trick. Jeez. A brand new deck of cards, hermetically sealed for that your protection, page is inside in a little paper seal, says United States Playing Card Company. Deja vu. I open it up inside a brand new deck of cards, <laughs> never touched by. This is amazing. He has like merged his previous two tricks together. Both tricks were really great, and it's like they met, they dated, they got married, and they had this baby. <laughs> and there's a lot of magic happening, and I'm losing track. Oh human hands but look when you look at this box it's different there are no jokers there are no advertising cards the cards are in new deck order though look allison ace two three you can see as we go through the cards really are in new deck order we're approaching up on those broke back kings as we get closer you get wait a second where the jack of diamonds should be there seems to be a piece of paper would you take that out unfold it and tell us what the page number is on that piece of paper 85 <laughs> It's my job. Sean Parkour, everyone! Job. That's amazing. So what's your craziest booking ever? Oh, it was a guy from a private island off the coast of Madagascar and wanted me to fly on a private jet the very next day to perform for the Saudi prince and a handful of models from all over the world. And uh, yeah, I did it. And Can I be your assistant? Yeah, you should, because it was incredible. I was there in the Indian Ocean with my own hut on my own side of the private island. He lives okay. on the other side. I'm part of your accident. It was so cool. And, and the first thing he said was, the reason I wanted you is I want to see that trick you did on Penn and Teller with the book. And I said, anything else? He says, well, something good like that will be fine. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. Some pretty wild things. All right, let's see if a third trophy is in the cards for you. The only thing I can guess is that he had to know it was going to be the Jack of whatever, the Jack of Diamonds and the page 85. Because clearly he wouldn't have time to rip out that page and stick it into the deck really fast. So therefore, he had to have known that ahead of time. But I cannot, for the life of me, understand how he would have forced Allison to choose that. You know, he gave her the deck. Uh, she was able to shuffle it and put cards into his hand and stop whenever he wanted. And then he literally said, we'll just use the top card. That was the Jack of, I think, Diamonds and the next two cards, an eight and a five. Unless somehow he managed to, you know, have those three cards palmed and drop them on top of the deck. But I was watching and I didn't see it. So if he did it, either he's just so smooth that upon watching it twice, I didn't notice, or you just can't see him do it because of the camera angles. Maybe his sleeve or his arm covers it when he does it. Anyway, that's all I can speculate for the moment. Let's go ahead and hear what Penn Teller have to say. Right now, what do you think? 
are they fooled or not fooled? I think there's like a 80% chance they were fooled and a 100% chance that I'm fooled. Proceeding. Hi guys. Hey, hey Sean. Sean. Hi. You know, I'm reminded by, uh, of the old expression, fool me once, shame on you. Fool us twice, shame on us. Fool us three times, we take you in the parking lot and kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know the old expression there, Sean. <laughs> First of all, before we make any jokes or anything, you're just such a wonderful performer. Thank you. Your tricks are always wonderful. They're always full of joy, always smooth, always clean. All your moves are just great. Thank now, you. let's get to busting your ass. Yeah. You did stuff, you did something really gutsy that people who fooled us before never dare to do. And that is to come out and do some of the same effects, which means the stuff that bothered us before, the stuff we thought about before, we were kind of watching for. Also, you did it so fast and furious and clean, you thought we'd forget stuff. Maybe we did, but you know how we play this game. You know how my mind kind of wanders in flights of beat poetry fantasy, like mythical flying horses and Ray Brown playing bass right in the pocket and the way the room got a little bit cooler right in the middle of your whole act. And we just think that a lot of that stuff we followed, we don't think you fooled us, and we don't think you're going to give us any flap about it. Does any of that make sense to you? Oh, yeah, that last word was just enough for me. I, I think they've got a pretty good handle on enough of it that I'm going to run. Oh. <laughs> Sean Parker! Hmm. Well, that's kind of strange. I, I really thought they were going to be fooled. Lord knows that I was. Uh, yeah, when Penn was talking there in code at the end, I recognized a few words. He said something about the room getting cooler. That's a reference to bringing in a cooler, which in the past you would have had no problem in just saying deck switch, but it seems like in more recent seasons they're sticking more with code words. I also noticed there was a moment where he was probably switching out the deck. I think most people probably understand like that happened during the effect. And they said like, uh, we don't think you're gonna give us any flap about that. And probably he was referring to the flap of a card box sticking off like that. I'm pretty sure the purpose of that was to make the uh, sealed deck look as if it were not already sealed. But as to how he got Allison to select that card and the five and the eight after it. You know, I mentioned my idea earlier in the video, but I'm really not sure. I just didn't see anything happen. And upon just listening to Penn talk once with his code, I didn't hear him say anything specifically about how he would have forced that card, unless I just missed it. Comment below, did you hear anything in his code talk that could have implied how the first part of the performance was done? But anyways, I thought it was a great effect and it was cool to see Sean Farquhar performing because he's so fun. The whole thing is complex and enjoyable and it's just a thing of beauty and a joy forever. By the way, there are three other magicians on this first episode, all of whom have fooled Penn and Teller twice before and are trying again for that third time. So I will be making reaction videos for those magicians as well. Make sure to click subscribe and the notification bell if you don't want to miss when I release those videos, probably this week. And that brings us to the Aesop's Fables portion of these videos, where in which I read you a small, short story, small and short, and maybe we can learn something from it, maybe not. This time we'll be reading The Frog's Complaint Against the Sun, chapter 34 for those of you following along at home, and here we go. The Frog's Complaint Against the Sun. Once upon a time, the sun was about to take himself a wife. The frogs in terror all raised their voices to the skies, and Jupiter, disturbed by the noise, asked them what they were croaking about. They replied, The sun is bad enough even while he is single, drying up our marshes with his heat as he does, but what will become of us if he marries and begets other sons? No moral of the storyline? Nope, that's the end of the story. A super short one. So that's kind of funny, I guess. The <laughs> so the frogs think that the sun is trouble enough on its own, and if there were lots of suns, how bad it would be, right? Is there anything at all we can take away from this story? Some kind of moral, or is this just a hilarious joke story? Smash like if you didn't laugh during that story. I mean, I'm struggling to think of how to apply this. Maybe if there's uh, someone you really don't like, and they get married and they're gonna have kids and you're like, great, there's gonna be even more of these type of people in the world. This guy's gonna teach his kid to be jerks just like him. I think I know a few people who probably should not be procreating. How about you? <laughs> Maybe be careful about how you're influencing and impacting other people's lives. If you are such a negative force, 
people are going to want bad things for you. They're not going to want to see you get married and have a family. They, you know, because... Uh, I don't know. Just be good to people. Treat people like you want to be treated. I don't think there's a lot to learn from this story. Maybe some of you who are smarter than myself can uh, extract some piece of advice from there. At any rate, that's the end of the book part of this video. And uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you click like, that'll help me a lot. And stay tuned because I will be publishing more videos this week. I'm back on my fast paced schedule of releasing more than one video per week. At any rate, I hope you're doing great and I'll see you next time. Oh